Stare at this brawny beast long enough, and you might think whales were meant to fly. This plane is enormous. I never cease to be amazed. A large-bellied big mouth swallowing up immense loads. You name it, we've carried it. Everything from uh, 20 tons, 64 foot long, 200 year old live cactus plant through live animals to America's cup yachts. Yeah, pretty well everything you can think of, we've carried it. It's the Antonov 124. Everybody knows London buses, right? Double-decker London buses. You could get probably half a dozen London buses in without thinking about it too much. The only thing that comes close to it in carrying capacity is the 747 cargo jet, and its body isn't even half as wide. The 124's cargo section is over 21 feet wide and 14 feet tall, able to carry a maximum payload up to 150 tons. For carrying mega loads, this wide body is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the skies. The biggest single piece we have ever carried was 135 metric tons. That's 270,000 pounds, one piece. Try this on for size. An auto racing team with three sports cars, five support trucks, five more SUVs, piles of spare tires, crates full of parts, and two full helicopters to boot. Been there, done that. Loading awkward, scale-breaking cargo into its belly is a battle. But the Antonov has the gear that makes digesting gut-filling loads a lot easier. When it's time to load, the nose lifts up, creating a huge opening. At the rear, a door lowers, doubling as a ramp. And the hydraulic system at the front of the plane makes this the low rider of high flyers. It kneels down on its undercarriage, which makes loading and unloading much easier. You can drive a truck in one end and out the other. The Antonov is sure to put any 18-wheeler to shame. 24 tires keep this Bertha rolling and its gaping hull is fully equipped for heavy-duty loading. It has its own cranes, which you don't find on any Western aeroplane. So you can pick up a 40-foot container at the rear of the aeroplane directly off a truck or off the ground or whatever, and carry it straight into the aeroplane and position it wherever you like. A lot of thrust is needed to overcome those kinds of gravitational odds. Altogether, the Antonov has four turbine engines that generate 192,000 pounds of thrust. That's more than six F-18 fighter jets combined. That kind of power calls for a lot of fuel. Its tanks carry over 280 tons of fuel. That's nearly 210,000 gallons. You could gas up over 13,000 average sized cars with that. When this baby is lumbering through the skies with, oh, let's say a full size locomotive, it guzzles gas up at a staggering rate. The aircraft itself burns approximately 15 uh, tons an hour. That means every 60 minutes, the 124 is burning over 4,000 gallons and will stop several times to refuel on a typical mission. That means the planning center needs to identify friendly territory en route to the destination for refueling. Computers come in handy, but there's an old school trick that also gets the deed done. We have a piece of string, and if we're flying from one point to the other, we take the string to see what the great circle route may be. The great circle being the shortest distance between any two points. So we take our piece of string, we lay it on our departure point, put it on our arrival point, and see, perhaps in between, where we could stop for our technical refueling. The Antonov 124 was developed in the Ukraine for the Soviet military. When the Iron Curtain fell and the USSR dissolved, the plane's new role became serving commercial needs. 
the Antonov Design Bureau formed a partnership with the London-based company Airfoil, and together they filled a niche that no other aircraft could fill. Airfoil handles the scheduling, takes the orders, and maps out the flights. And the Ukrainian-based Antonov people handle maintenance and the flying of the craft. The crew on board not only loads cargo, it doubles as a high-tech team of flight engineers. We have 22 crew members on board. They are specialized in various uh, areas on board the airplane, avionics, engines, hydraulics. So it's a self-supporting craft and there are a certain amount of spares on board to support the operation, so we don't have to keep coming back to base if we need spares. You'd think the biggest plane in the world would require the biggest runway in the world. The truth is, this mighty flying machine can touch down in a fairly limited space. It can even land on grass. We have operated in every corner of the world, Australia, South America, South Africa, Central Africa, North America, Europe, Siberia, and the, the Far East. When you add up the fuel, staff, upkeep, and labor, one flight costs tens of thousands of dollars. When the job is urgent, it pays. And in some cases, the mission is priceless. I remember about three years ago with the hurricane in, in uh, the West Indies, uh, we had three aircraft based in Curacao um, taking in supplies to St. Martin. One time it packed 452 refugees from Ethiopia into its burly hull and flew them out to safety. We don't like disasters, but uh, yes, that uh, we, we come into our own when it's, uh, there is a problem. We are ready to react straight away. Straight away, to whomever calls, if there's a big job that needs moving, the Antonov will fill the bill.